Welcome to Whiskey Vaults. I'm Daniel. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> this is a weird one. This took a little work looking up. So, this was donated by. Oh, wow, what is going on? Magnificent bastard Shimmy K. Shimmy K, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> What I don't know... I did not know how to hold this, because the... Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, the, see? see? Yeah. And then it's just right on the... I mean, points are for inventiveness and uniqueness. Bourbon Rabbi, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Mm -hmm. Now, this is being made at the Casey Jones Distillery in Kentucky. Is this one of the things that I should probably take a photo of here, because it's not going to be online? It's definitely not going to be online. Okay. Every once in a while, I'm making thumbnails and <laughs> there's your front. Yeah, there's no photo to be found. Google does not work on some things. You know what? It looks like just a 375 from that angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really <laughs> does. There's a guy who's known as the Bourbon Rabbi. Okay. And he's gotten into the industry. He's become pretty famous. Yep. Uh, it leads tastings and trainings and all that kind of stuff. Um, in Kentucky, and tours, and lectures, and he, he also went around certifying bourbons as kosher. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he provided certification for yeah, kosher yeah, bourbon. Yeah, yeah. He decided he wanted to have his hand on uh, whiskeys that he could use in his tastings, mm -hmm. and so he worked with local distillers. At least this is my understanding of the story. Correct me if you hear this and you know him. He started sourcing, yeah. basically, his own bottles. Yeah. Not with the goal of like going white label, sell my own product, right. but with the goal of like, then I can buy these bottles and I have bottles for my tastings that I have chosen mm -hmm. based on the tastings that I want to do. Okay, so and how he, I want to present bourbon. Uh, do we know if he's getting bottles to show like a specific, here's a, this kind of flavor profile, here's this kind of note? Just know he chose it. But it got so good and so many, hmm. now they sell it. And there's oh. a bunch of retail stores that carry them and sell them as bourbon rabbi. Sourced from, at least uh, as far as I know, this sourced from Casey Jones Distillery. So... This execution of a bottle, mm -hmm. okay, it's kind of like weird and funky, like where's the the front, but if you're going to be getting into bars. Yeah, and tastings. Bars and tastings. Where it's like, hey, we're going to go through these five whiskeys, yeah. and you line them up like that, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, that could be super cool. Yeah, that could be super cool. Um, and also, oftentimes on shelf space, mm -hmm. whenever there's like a stock boy or a bartender who's busy and they don't have much room, they're not going to try and... You know, muscle out other bottles. Yeah. They're going to slip it in. Yeah, as this is somebody as who possible. understands how the bar works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, um, who was it that we know that did a pretty big release where they actively designed the Well, sign. Angel's Envy does it on the side. Okay. Even though their bottle is kind yeah, of chunky. Because they understand, like, the bottle's most likely not going to be presented the way we want it to. Yeah. It's going to be shoved narrowly. So maybe you can do something in the front, but you also need to do the side. Like, if you do this, mm -hmm. look, nothing happens. Oh, look, this amazing Jefferson's bottle. Then on the side, yeah. the government warning. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a nice vanilla note. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and corn, for lack of a better. It's just... Vanilla cream corn. Yeah. It's and reminding then, me of street corn. So there's no way this is going to be an 80 proof. No. Yeah. This is 115. Mm -hmm. But that story, like, if he came out with the 40%. Yeah, that'd be funny. Hey, baby. <laughs> you know that street corn that you can get that's like charred corn? Yeah. Yeah. It's that is sweet, charred quality, and then... That vanilla is the um, vanilla cupcake icing. Mm hmm. Then beyond that, it's a little bit of honey. But the vanilla is dominating for me. That oaked vanilla. I'm trying to find the sweetness on that, but that toasted note is really strong in the back. Oh, oh. that's nice. Where'd that cherry come from? And pepper. Cherry and black pepper. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it doesn't, I'm waiting for it to finish bitter because that black pepper is so sparkly. Yeah. I'm waiting for it to get dry. It does a head fake in that direction. And it doesn't. No. It's like, oh, I think I'm gonna be, no, just kidding, sweet and oily. Right at the moment when, it, wow. usually something would, you know, with 
vanilla and cherry yeah. and anise would usually shift and get into like a barrel bitter tannin type of note. It gives you that moment of here's the barrel, but it doesn't build and build and build the, bitter, the bitterness. Totally listening. <laughs> Definitely. What are you getting? Oh, hey. Did not shoot the whole last video. You know why? Psalmless. Because you didn't point your North Star at it. Oh, yeah. Ah! <laughs> mm. Mm. Nice finish, too. It stays with you well. I, the nose is simple. I'm hoping that adding a little water is going to change yeah, that. There were things that showed up on the taste. I was not expecting that cherry note. And the oakiness was much more prominent on the palate. Mm. Okay. Dash again. Let's see. Bloop. Bloop, bloop, be doop. A little bloop, you <clears throat> Oh, the oils lingered. That heat <clears throat> caught me in the. What is this part of your throat? The, um, weenus. That little hollow right there. That's your elbow. The nape is the back of your neck, right? Mm -hmm. The nape. It's got to be a name for that little hollow right there. <clears throat> That's where oily whiskey always catches me, right there. Mm. Oh, this did a little, uh. A little wicker. Yeah, yeah, wicker and. It's wanting to be a graham cracker, but it's not quite there. Yeah, it just woke up some of the barrel notes. Gosh, so close to a graham cracker. I can't quite lock it in. Oh, yeah. Some wheat, wheaty bread. Hey, that's good, oh, man. That's some uh, bread crust. This is very classic. Mm -hmm. Very classic bourbon, but well executed. The palate, a lot of great flavors. I think this is well chosen. That drop made a pretty big difference. Huge difference. But I think I liked it better without, even though it was punchier. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit more clarified and vibrant yeah. in the flavors. Better put together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting, you know, that water, right? That water shook things up and it blurred the lines between everything that was going on. I, I like that differentiation between the layers. I don't know who sent this. I don't know if Shimmy K has some acronym. I mean, I know the name, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if Shimmy K has some acronym. I mean, maybe the bourbon rabbi sent it himself. Maybe it was just a fan who wanted us to try bourbon rabbi's Shimmy stuff. Shimmy K. But uh, well, there were no notes or anything. Shimmy K slash bourbon rabbi. Yeah, but I that was from packaging. I, I That's my handwriting. Oh, that's you. That means that someone sent us this thing with no notes whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. Dong Gold 3898. I always wondered how many, how the MBs feel when they donate a bottle that they absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't get the response they hoped for. Yeah. Understanding real one and all. I'm just wondering if anyone feels like the bottle they loved or donated was not seen as good by the Magnificent Gentleman. Yeah. I'm sure that happens. I'm always a little self-conscious of that, but we that's the whole point is oh, yeah. objecti uh, subjective reality. Mm -hmm. And all we're doing is giving you our version of things. Yeah, and like even you and me, we'll mm -hmm. very, we're very often on the same page, but every once in a while... I'll tell you, the times totally, we're not, totally it's totally very different. dramatic. Yeah. It's like we're not even tasting the same It's like whiskey. almost tasting the inverted version. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> everything you get, I don't, and everything I get, yeah. you don't. I don't know why that And then is. the next one is like, oh, yeah. Just oh, right yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Gustav Jansen, 6499. I want to try Talisker, but should mm. I go for the original tin, this one, or Talisker Storm? What is the, this one? I, th uh, I pulled that and I didn't even, I meant to cut So the, the paste original under there. tin or. Basically, of Talisker's, yeah. say 18, 10. I'm a fan of the 43 Storm. myself. I like the 43 year old. Um, Dark Storm, the 43 year old. That's pathetic. <laughs> All right, what's the. <laughs> Uh, I would argue. I don't remember the story. Everything I love about Talisker is in the tin. Even what's in Storm and 18, and even in the 43, yeah. is at least began in the tin. Yeah. And whereas some other lines you'll get like drastically different whiskeys, mm -hmm. I think it's fair that Honestly, I, I could argue even somebody like Smoke. Here's what you do. You start with the tin. You don't yeah. go like deep into the pocketbook. You start with the tin. If you like that, then storm. you can figure out whether or not it's justified for you to spend the extra money. Yeah. But then uh, try storm. Yeah, and there's probably a lot of bars where you can get Talisker tin. Talisker is one of those ones that's more readily available. Not usually storm. Yeah, you don't even have to invest in like a full-on bottle, man. You no. just gotta pour somewhere. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah. And if you like that, then maybe play a little uh fast and loose with the monthly budget there and get yourself a something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Maybe a little yes. ramen for a couple of days. This is nice. This is classic. It, uh, it's, it's, it's well executed. I wonder, I wonder who distilled it. Casey Jones. 
You know my association with Casey Jones? Is it the, 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 the Casey Jones bat? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle character. <gasps> You're right. That was Casey Jones. Yes. Yeah. That's why you were saying this and I wasn't making the connection. Yeah. Yeah, that's a I teenage, forgot about that. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle character. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Everybody. <laughs> Aren't they coming out with a new mutant always, movie? Always. Yeah. I think it's a, like the a boys wanted to see it. animated thing or something. Like the, I, That's still the first time I ever heard a curse word in the theater. <laughs> it was the first Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah, well, Michelangelo. It. Something happens, and yeah. then it cuts to a far city scene, yeah. and you hear him go, Damn! And I was, I was however old I was, and I was like, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> and me and my cousins were looking at each other like, we heard a car swear in the theater. <laughs> and our parents were like, oh no. Because they were very uptight at the time about right. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, we heard a curse word in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> um, that movie, when the, the live action movie came out, mm-hmm. um, of course, it's my immediate, this is my favorite movie before I even saw it. Like, oh, this yeah. is the greatest like, you just know The greatest movie. piece. A cinem- <laughs> cinematic achievement ever. They had the best action. And then I saw the movie, and he just confirmed everything that I already oh, yes. knew. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I was watching a, a review. That, remember Siskel and Ebert? Yeah. I was like, all right, let's pile on the love to this perfect, perfect film. Perfect. <laughs> they didn't like it. I don't know why not. I was furious. How dare they? Which makes me wonder, <laughs> coming back to the comment. Yeah. The people that send something that they absolutely love. Yeah. And then Siskel and Dingleberry here, <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it. How dare they? How dare they? How dare I, they like they're it. obviously wrong. I'm questioning all my life choices. <laughs> I'll never trust them again. Uh, yeah, I like it. It's good. It's classic. And it's uh, without water. Nicer than with. Mm-hmm. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink with us. Mm-hmm.